More on Red Tide, we're joined by Chief Meteorologist and Climate Specialist Jeff Baradelli. We were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm really susceptible to that. I mean, it is a burning. You can mm -hmm. smell it, sort of feel it in your eyes. It's terrible. And last it's year was really blooming. Terrible. Yeah. Awful. It's bad for your health. It's bad for the economy because we depend on good water quality. It's horrible for fish and marine creatures. I had a boat for years, and the fish in the live well, the live bait, mm -hmm. would die almost immediately. Mm -hmm. It it's obliterates wild. everything in its path. Yeah. So let's talk about the human impact, the human toll on red tide. And the study that just came out is very interesting because we've been wondering this and uh, surmising it for years. First of all, natural processes explain the initial blooms of red tide offshore of the Tampa Bay area, but humans make blooms worse. And here's how. Nitrogen discharges from land increase the intensity and also increase the longevity. And one of the biggest culprits is Lake Okeechobee, and here's why. During the summertime, we get thunderstorms that form all across the state, but especially in the Kissimmee River Basin. And it picks up all kinds of nutrient pollution, like nitrogen and phosphorus, and deposits it into the lake. Now, when the lake starts to fill up, the Army Corps of Engineers has no choice but to release water to the east through the St. Lucie Canal and to the west through the Caloosahatchee. And that finds its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, at the same time, we may have a red tide that's forming naturally offshore, but when these two meet, these nutrients and the warm water from climate change supercharge these red tide outbreaks and make them much more expansive and more intense and make them last even longer. And of course, the toxins and the low oxygen environments can obliterate fish and other marine organisms. So this is a problem that we have right now, and it's going to continue into the future as long as we keep allowing so much of the nutrients to escape into the Gulf of Mexico. All right, let's talk.